I can feel the reaper following me. All these motherfuckers want me to bleed. Unspoken promises I need to keep. So if you try to take me down, then I'll give you the finger. Give you the finger. Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu, and I am here for Jujutsu Kaisen episode 6, and we are here to figure out how the show will go on when our main character is dead with a giant hole in his chest and his heart no longer in his body. Of course, he's not actually going to be dead, and we got a little teaser of that at the end, just in case we were worried that this was going to, and I was slightly worried, turn into a Yuji is the martyr sacrifice at the beginning who inspires these less gung-ho, less good, good boy characters to be more good, uh, but we're not doing that. Yuji's in there, and I kind of have a feeling of what we might do here, so I'm going to throw that at you, and then we'll do a drawing, and then we'll get into it. So I'm going to try to make this opening as quick as I can. Uh, I got two thoughts. In world, in universe, I feel like this is a power play by Sukuna, combined off of his whole removal of heart thing. Even with Yuji coming back, well, he'll die, and then maybe I can figure out some way in the interim period, because Sukuna seems to have all the cards here. It's like, if Yuji is going to regenerate his heart and become a whole boy again, that's going to be on Sukuna's whim. And so he's got some power there, and again, a, a thing to like hold over Yuji's head in whatever internal world they end up talking to each other in uh, as leverage in order to get what he wants. Zooming out from that, on a narrative level, this feels like a really potent, potentially valuable way to have Yuji, to give Yuji some alone time, with Sukuna there of course, but some alone time to think and consider all of the suffering, pain, and helplessness that he felt as he faced down his own mortality while fighting the unbeatable god womb in the last couple of episodes. Yuji's got some things that have been tied off and some things that are kind of up in the air, especially with Sukuna's disdain for Yuji's presumed weakness. So I think that's going to be our conversation in here. And as we've said, every good fight is a conversation. And so far, all the fights in Jujutsu Kaisen have been dialogues, have been back and forths about ideas. So I fully expect that a potentially metaphorical uh, uh, Ichigo goes and fights his own Bankai type of fight thing would be right up the alley for this kind of a show, and I think it would make a lot of sense and give us a chance to have, like, a more... This is a weird word for it, but a more intimate relationship with Sukuna. He is inside our minds, after all. It would behoove us to get to know the fucking guy, if only so that we can... <sighs> know our enemy, you know? Okay, I don't know what we're going to be able to do inside Yuji's head, but I feel like most of our episode is going to be outside of that realm, dealing with Panda and Maki and uh, uh, Bonito Flakes Boy and, and our other squad members who are all going to head on their way to a tournament arc of some kind. We're doing like a magic school inter-high battle sorcery competition with another magic high school, which means the opportunity to introduce a ton of characters, flesh out the power structures and like abilities of the world and, and have them interact and maybe do some training sequences and lots of jokes and fun things. And it's, it's classic stuff and it's classic for a reason. It's a good time and I'm here for it and it gives us a lot of time to build stuff up. And of course, it's time that Yuji isn't spending training with our our other squad, so we can have them grow and evolve and change and bounce off of each other in the absence of the main character. And the main character is always kind of a centralizing force in your story, so if they're there in the story, it's kind of hard to put focus on the other characters, so removing him for a little while is actually really convenient to get a more fleshed out cast of secondary characters if you really want to do that. So this feels like it really lines up in a couple of ways artistically, authorially, to be valuable for doing some character development for Yuji and eventually coming out of this with some kind of a, a dynamic established between him and Sukuna, which might be the same dynamic of like, hi, I'm Sukuna, I'm gonna fuck with you at every possible opportunity, get wrecked, kid, uh, and Yuji just being like, oh, I'm gonna call on your power when I need to, and only then, and never ever else, because that's bad. Um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I will note that it's probably important that Yuji figured out the barest taste of Jujutsu sorcery by channeling his darkness and emotion into his fist before he hops into being dead, because I feel like that's a really useful ability to have if you're facing down the greatest curse. Uh, and I think that's all my spiel for the beginning of the episode. Tournament arc, eventually training stuff now, Yuji inside his own mind fighting and in, 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 fighting the, the, the guy or just talking to him or figuring it out and somehow in doing so returning to reality. Maybe this episode, maybe not. Probably this episode. I feel like probably, well, maybe not. I don't know. <coughs> I'm going to do a drawing uh, if I can ever find my pencil. Usually I can't find my pencil because my shit's all a mess. This time I cleaned up. And now, now I can't find my pencil. I don't know where I put it when I cleaned up. What the fuck? I put it in the, the box where pencils go, which is over there, which I just never, I never put it there because I always put it right in reach where I draw. <sighs> the lesson is never organize anything. That's the, that's the takeaway, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna, this is a weird thought that I had. I don't know if I can even do it, honestly, because it's really warpy to to think about so i'm just gonna try and we'll see oh yay oh i don't have the fucking shit so i'm really uh mildly pleased by how the the dumb foreshortening on this has has worked it's kind of worked i should have drawn the lines that i was looking for first that's the forgot about that that's in the book i mean this stuff is super useful too but uh i was looking for something specific i don't know what the fuck i'm looking for I feel like he would wear some kind of, I don't know what shoes Sukun is wearing, honestly, but I feel like he would wear some kind of, like, uh, uh, like, toe sandal type thing. Or maybe, maybe nothing. He doesn't really clothes, does he? <laughs> he doesn't really clothes. Hmm. And then, there's one thing. Oh, yeah. That'll do. Metaphorically, of course, down at the bottom of the pit, reaching up toward the sky, and standing at the edge, looming over you, is the shadow of the other you. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I, a great and terrible guardian. Alright, let's dive into episode 6 of Jujutsu Kaisen, meet some characters, fight with some characters, and figure out what's going on inside that boy. Beep beep timer. Uh, uh, two versions. Picture in picture in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep beep timer. Early access on Patreon. All the jazz. Beep beep timer. We're going in. We're going in. Oh, it's bubbly. We're inside his bloodstream and organs and body. Oh, the bones. Huh. We're actually in here. That's weird. Sweet! <laughs> well, that starts the dynamic of the conversation off in a good way. <laughs> We're ready to go. Don't look up without permission. I'm the king here. Hmm. Literally, I'm the king inside your own body, right? <laughs> a throne inside your ribcage. What a cool visual! I really like the slide- okay. That was cool. I just got an eyelash in my eye. Oh, God. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Also, there's a whole conspiracy of curses going on. Ooh, there are a bunch more people in that shot, aren't there? We were, like, zoomed out. Inside, outside, inside. Hey, Yuji, did you eat a bunch of cows? <laughs> I mean, the heart, though. <sighs> How'd you get up here? Just toying with ya. Ow. How are you so dope, Yuji? Not dope enough, but... Like one of those squeeze dolls where the eyes pop out. Oh. It's pretty empty in here, man. <laughs> Just accept my conditions. Yeah, it's another ploy. Oh? Hey. How often? Ooh. And that's a contract that he can actually, like, force you to abide by if you don't even... Then why do you want it? Why do you want it? No, he'll hold to it, but why does he want that minute? So it'll it'll be enforced. This does work. This works really well. Yeah, Devil's Contract. Is that an agreement? Oh man, what did you just sign up for? What does he want that minute for, man? No, no, he can use that at any time. Ha! <laughs> you just wanted, you just wanted to get him thinking. <laughs> get him gloating. Well, <laughs> you're in his domain, bro. His fully, his reality. So we're, we're coming up with condition. Kite? Did ki? Kite? What? <laughs> what? All right, he really does have it out for the higher ups. Are you a villain, Gojo? <laughs> That's a pretty villainous thought. I'm I'm into it. Upsetting corruption is great.
to indoctrinate the youth. Ah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Hey, we're building up some characters. <sighs> this is going to be weird. This is going to be weird. <laughs> at least she didn't at least she didn't get to get her hands in there. <laughs> Aww. Ah, a, a useful tool back in my tool belt, but also some real care. Hmm, what a balance. Ugh, paperwork. Leave him dead. Oh, smart. After all, he was targeted, Gojo believes, by the higher-ups who tried to actually kill him. Oh, just long enough. Oh. Full body. What? What does he want the minute for? Are we back here? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. He feels it. Four stepsisters? Stepbrother. <laughs> Stepbrother, what are you doing? <laughs> Wait, they want Gojo, or they want him gone. Later. <laughs> Great cut, too. <laughs> oh, man, it's getting hot in here. Is she... No, wait. Oh, boy! <laughs> oh, she's not getting away, is she? Oh, wow! That's a lot of fingers! I mean, you can try. Gotta have the little bit of hope before despair takes it all. Wow! <gasps> Wild. Some people kill for reasons, and some people kill because they can. Oh, we're telling... Oh, we're telling the the woman. Wow, so he's following up. Characters bounce off each other and have impacts on each other. Yeah, man. He ran past it and he felt it. Oh, he ripped off the name tag. Wow. But still. But still. 
At least you can. <laughs> That's pretty close! That's good! Kombu's very good! Of course not. All angles. Ah! Ah! Are you being swung around like a hammer? I'm down. If you wanna... If you wanna wear a cute tracksuit, I'm in. Okay. Oh, we're gonna get our shit kicked. Oh, this is gonna leave some welts. <laughs> oh, on the other side, we're gonna train something else. Yay! Yeah, he is a cut above the rest. How? Where did that come from? You praised him. Ah. Uh. Grow, grow, collide. Classic. <laughs> cool, here's your teacher. I'm out of here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, okay. Yeah, you apply the one to the other. It, but it just, poof, it's just energy. It hurts. Okay. Shape it versus just fire the gunpowder. You gotta channel the energy first. Like, can't ever? Ooh. Oh, so the beast binding is different? Well, so he might be able to, he just doesn't know it because he doesn't know how to channel the stuff. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, he knows! Can't use them yet. Sukuna's techniques? <laughs> Alright, we can stop with this. This is strange. Yeah, just channel some energy and deliver a punch. <laughs> so use physical techniques plus some extra curse. I wonder if he needs to have his blood exposed. Probably not. I bet he can't either. Eh? I bet you can't. Learn to channel it. This explains everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've got zero training. This is fun. I I always love this sort of power system shit. Especially when it has some... Um... <laughs> is this simple gear? Is this simple gear? Oh, emotions. He's giving him emotions. 
Hey. It's like that, the little Kepi. Uh. Oh. <laughs> so it is like that. That thing's gonna beat the shit out of you, bro. Oh, it's got very sharp claws. <laughs> That'll bring the negative emotions out. So you have to be able to constantly produce that negative emotion while all sorts of emotions are flowing into you? Huh. So you train for external circumstances to be able to focus under any- yeah, under any condition. Perfect. This is smart! Stay frosty. Is that a Muppets movie? What was that? <laughs> oh, brutal. What a great... I love goofy training shit. Mmm. Hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like the cut in. So he's inferring that there's something more to him from that. I wonder if Sukuna was just doing that as a play. No, he really did see something interesting in. My hand is stuck. <laughs> Everybody, my hand is stuck in this break. Fuck. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Listen, bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to not die here. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I agree. Maybe not the chips, but I agree. Or the soda, but snacks. Snacks. He doesn't remember. He doesn't remember. <sighs> How odd. Soka. Yo, you better keep a close fucking eye, Gojo. What does he want the minute? Is it any time? He didn't say once. He didn't say once. He said, I say it. And we switch. And I don't kill anybody, but he can do anything else. <laughs> oh, he's gonna go break some rules or something. What are you gonna do, Gojo? Oh! Just realized that he was under attack. Cool. <laughs> I don't know you. 
Ah, you're about to, flames, flames. And he's got whatever the artifact is that they believe can actually capture him in an endless prison of shitness. Cool! Cool! This hit a lot of beats. In a groovy way. Can he call Divine Dog White back? Or is that doggo all full dead? I can't get over the ability that sketching the color has to create motion inside of and outside of the lines. That's cool. Do we get a stroll? We do. With power? <laughs> How long have you been here? Mm -hmm. What? What? <laughs> ah! Eh, ah! Eh, ah! 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 Lots of curses, much Gojo fighting. We, we knew what was going to happen. I, I really got to be more on the ball of stopping that immediately. Hey, so this is, we get exactly what I was hoping for in multiple ways. A ploy for Sukuna to gain more power and a method of having Yuji demonstrate his, his like, his willingness to fight. I think that counts as... Like, uh, uh, facing down the difficulty in, or, or the struggle or the helplessness. I think he's got it. I think he's got it. The ploy is so interesting, though, because it's so open-ended. My thought is that he can do all sorts of things. Communicate with other entities, contact people, set things in motion, find fingers. All sorts of stuff. He's just not allowed to kill or hurt people. And he can do it any time, as many times as he wants, I think. That's a hell of a condition. And of course he predicted that Gojo would see through this and expect it. So making him forget is crucial, but also important to keep his cover because he can yell and nobody will be suspicious. So Sukuna has the ability to turn into, to just gain corporeality for a minute. What can you do in a minute? Multiple minutes. Because you could spread them out once a day for a year, right? Start performing rituals. He could do. He, this is a powerful entity, man. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I, weirdly, I'm thinking about it in like D&D &D terms. It's like, all right, you're a character. You are in contact with a like CR 23 god level entity and it asks you if it can have 10 rounds once in a while and you don't remember it and it can do whatever it wants it's just not allowed to hurt people oh my god the stuff that can get done the stuff that can get done in, ten, in a minute oh. what a cool condition it lets Sukuna have the power that he wants while giving Yuji like <laughs> it's cool it's cool it also works really well to establish what I what I was hoping for, which is more of a, a dynamic of working together between our, our characters. They're side by side, and they're in this together, and Sukuna has, like, been forced to make this deal and even concede to the conditions that Yuji put on those conditions about harming people, but it's still very much one-sided, I think. And, and I think, really, he clawed some 
ability, some power that he wouldn't have gotten. ooh -ee. I really like the visuals of Yuji's body becoming this domain, this realm. The back and forth between the characters is great. I did not expect Yuji to be all grin and ready to go. But he did just lose everything and he thinks himself dead dead, right? So why not? Fuck this guy. I like it. I like this double irreverent dynamic between them. We know Sukuna doesn't think that Yuji's worth shit, right? Doesn't care. But Yuji being like, yep, yeah, fuck you, demon dad. Get, just shut the fuck up. I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna kill you. You suck. It's really cool. I like this back and forth dynamic between them. It's neat. There are some fun cuts, particularly Yuji running up this thing. More of that same, it's similar to the Fushiguro cut when he was running around him. Reminds me of the same sort of style. And it's nothing. It's nothing for your boy. Smack, back, whack, bam, boom, bam, no. And kicks him off. Here are the conditions. You forget, and I get a minute. We explain a bunch of lore and background stuff, and magic power system knowledge. I'm very pleased with this. It reminds me of the episodes of Hunter x Hunter where we actually lay out the Nen system. Um, and not all of it, but lay out some core rules so that we get some grasp of understanding of the way that things work, and that carries over into our conversations with Fushiguro and about uh, Cursed Tools, and similarly our conversations with Gojo once we actually wake up explaining the Cursed Energy stuff. It gives us a pretty solid view of what this magic energy stuff is, it's cursed energy, it's negative emotions channeled into power, and there are rules that bind these entities. Um, contracts, oaths, and, and bonds are real and legit and important, which makes perfect sense in the kind of a system where you can call upon beasts or entities, uh, and similarly in a kind of a system where certain writings or scripts or things have magical power, right? Like, the idea that there is almost a math behind the scenes or a, a, a karmic system of energy that keeps things balanced or ensures that things follow the rules makes everything make a lot of sense and fits into a lot of our, like, cultural background around spiritual systems, right? It fits. It's, um, not terribly unique, really? I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's pretty close to, oh god, a lot of stuff. And that's okay, alright? It's, it's okay. It doesn't need to be totally unique. What seems to be unique about it is that the, the techniques that each cursed, everybody's got cursed energy, some might, might have more of it or less of it, like mana or whatever, but the techniques that can be utilized are engraved on the person, so it's like innate to you how you manifest those those techniques and abilities, which means that you get a wide variety of people all tapping into the same wellspring of power, all coming from their negative emotions and their training and ability to channel those things, meaning everybody that we meet has had some degree of emotional training despite their craziness and on-edgedness of many of the characters. So, it gave us a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. An immense amount of room to make cool people with interesting stories that give them the negativity on one side that they need, and then find a way to give them the positivity that they must necessarily have on the other side to balance it out, and then give them cool powers and abilities that are unique to them inherently by the nature of the power system, and produce a wide variety of possibilities. Probably there are lots of categories of users. We said, you know, a cursed tool user, that guy's the cursed speech user, but that's probably a specific thing. And then Fushiguro with the beasts and stuff, he uses his own weird shadow technique for it, but beast users are not uncommon. Uh, and we know that because the principal uses kind of cursed beasts. They're, they're, cor they're corpses, but they're a similar circumstance, right? And made in a unique way because he sews them up and makes them out of cloth and stuff. And and then animates them with his energy. So we could have characters who have different modes of getting to very similar power sets, like a summoner type of power set is Fushiguro and is the principal, but very different ways of getting there. Reminds me a bit of Worm, Parahumans, where uh, uh, you can sort of group people and categorize them badly based on what they, what kinds of powers that they have. Um, and that has some some layover for the actual fundament of the way that the power system works. No spoilers. Uh, 
uh, tracks, that tracks to me, and I like that we get the information here. It seems like it's important information to have, and I'm glad to have it. I don't know what you're after, but hey, as long as I- Nope, never! I'm not giving you shit! And so they battle, and the moment that he agrees to the duel for the conditions, Slice. Fool. <laughs> Fool of a boy! Man, he's just really able to chop anything in his divine domain, huh? Sever anything. Man, this conversation is a doozy. Gojo really trusts this guy and is really willing to tell him, Hey, I'm in this to upset the order of things and rewrite reality a little bit. Pretty interesting. Pretty nefarious. You know? I mean, really. If we were at any other magic school with any other magic teachers, Gojo would be a radical renegade and we'd be looking out for him, right? He could be a mid mid-season villain boss. Because he's trying to upset the order of everything, the tradition. He's very much not a traditionalist, and very, very disdainful toward the top of the jujutsu world, filled with scum, or various kinds of bakas. It would be easy to kill everyone, but it wouldn't change anything because the fundamental power structure is corrupt in and of itself, I think is what he thinks. And so I choose education. This is also quite nefarious, isn't it? Isn't it? You can totally spin this just a little bit differently, and really, how many characters have you met who are like, they're running, uh, uh, trying to change the system and bring in a new order of youths who have been trained carefully to follow in his ideals and footsteps and to respect and love him above their, uh, their organization. This is like the seeds of a Terrible rebellion, but we're on the side of it. So we're in a really interesting circumstance because I could totally see a different version of this story where Gojo is a villain and he's like indoctrinating children in order to get them to believe that the system is corrupt so that they can fight up against it. The question is, is the system really corrupt? And the evidence that they tried to murder Yuji by sending him somewhere he had no business being seems pretty strong. So we're on Gojo's side for this. But I'm just gonna note and point at it and be like, that's some nefarious dealing, man. That's pretty, that's pretty wild. But what do you do if you're in a system that is so corrupt that you're, you know, you can't, you're gonna go complain about the, the board? <laughs> Not gonna work. So he chooses education. He's taking the back door and the long con in order to, in order to sow the seeds of change. Hmm. What I really do like is when Yuji fades in and we see serious emotion there from Gojo and Yuji was going to be one of their number. But there's also something to it that's a little bit, a little bit nefarious, right? Emotional or not, he thinks of all these most talented people that he's raised Arr, Yuji was supposed to be one of them, and there's real emotion in his voice. But is it emotion for the child, or is it emotion for the tool? I don't, I don't mean for all you Gojo lovers to throw shade at your boy. But is he emotional here because he cares for Yuji? Or is he emotional because he had the last piece of his plan that he needed, and now it slipped away from him? Or both. It can be both. And we get started. I really thought this is such good timing. It's a great, it's a great gag. I really thought she was gonna be like hands deep, full X cut into his chest and getting ready to go. Um, but nope, he just sits right. And we have a bit of a bit of man service, uh, uh, and a bit of hell. This guy feels the vibe. This guy has put four stepsisters through college. I hope he got some. <laughs> Sorry about the beeping. There is an enormous, like, flatbed uh, 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 tow truck that just dumped a full waste management, like, container-sized dumpster filled with dirt into my neighbor across the street's uh, uh, driveway. Not the dirt itself, the full container. Um, I guess they're gonna unload it and do some landscaping, I think. Uh, but it's beeping like a motherfucker for now.
I'm just going to wait for a minute or two. It's the other way around. They're picking up the giant dirt dumpster. So I guess they did the landscaping. Anyway, once it's picked up, I assume that they're going to drive off into the sunset. And we'll be left beep free. It's taking forever. They like got the whole dirt container up onto it. And they started to roll this like giant arm thing that rolls a big uh, uh, cloth over the top of it to hold everything in while it's driving and it got stuck so they had to pull that all the way back up and then take the whole thing out like most of the way down and then the dude got out and like fiddled with the the chains and stuff and now they're doing the whole process over again <laughs> seems like second time was the charm and that's mission accomplished for them good job waste management folks Four stepsisters. That's too many stepsisters. This poor guy. And we're going to try to murder Gojo Satoru. But this guy thinks that ceiling's a better idea and floats the idea of prison realm, which looks a lot like all the, all the stuff that he had on the walls when he had Yuji in the chair, you know? Pretty familiar. I wonder if it'll work. I feel like it won't work. Ah, <sighs> introduce a couple of characters into our, uh, our, our little diner just to, to uh, fully immolate them. <laughs> what a fun piece of animation. Just, just skittering out of here. And then, making it really hot. Gorgeous animation on all the fire stuff. Gotta mention, it's really cool looking. And the... Oh, the stark contrast of how real and vibrant the fire is against the pretty normal anime aesthetic of the diner makes it just, oh, suddenly hell has arrived in your hometown. I love it. I love it. Screaming faces, absolute horror, and a very classic pull hope away at the very last moment as this girl gets almost to the exit. And then, uh, whoosh. And Mr. Volcano... Believes himself worthy. Eight or nine fingers is a lot of fingers. That's more than I thought. Shit. <laughs> He's like halfway there to a full Sukuna. <sighs> and our impact has really... Has really mattered. We really had an effect on Fushiguro. As he ran out of that detention facility, he was unable to stop himself from grabbing the name tag. Couldn't take the body. I wanted to follow through on Yuji's wish. And my impression is his own mind has been slightly altered as well. Part of what he said echoes is true, right? This isn't worth it anyway. Because nobody's going to care for this guy. He sucks. And as the mother says, I'll be the only one who grieves for him. Who mourns. But isn't that enough? Isn't that enough? I think so. I think this is a cool idea present here. The impact that Yuji has had despite his death has really been felt, and it feels like it's changed Fushiguro a little bit. We get we get to have our cake and eat it too, and have Yuji be the martyr who helps like force our characters to be more good boys, and have him come back. Pretty neat. And he's even he's even thinking about it. Who? What kind of people do you want to save? He's approaching his his seniors and the other people and trying to figure it out, trying to get more information about why they might be doing things and flesh out his own ideas. At least that's how I'm seeing it. She doesn't care, of course. All all sharp, all sharp, Maki. I don't really care. And wild goofiness. It's wild and it's goofy, and we flip flop back before between the two things, having characters fighting and talking about like the dynamics of stuff, and then having Gojo instruct Yuji on the other side. And I really like it. I really like it. I don't like Yuji melting into a paper and then uh, falling around all over the place. It's just weird looking, but kind of goofy. And it, ah, yeah. I do like shouting out all of the great magical spirit abilities. Because... Of course, that's what we all want, right? We're all, we all just want to be a super-powered superhero. Don't worry about it, bud. Your power will be coming. Information about Cursed Energy, a fun training idea. I always like this shit, where it's like a, a non-traditional training thing, all the way back to wax on, wax off, right? It's always fun when you're doing some kind of a uh, task that doesn't seem related entirely to what you're doing, but then it actually pays off in a really potent way. I like it. 
So we cut back and it's just ideas for carrying cursed tools. We're not really sure why does he want or need to carry cursed tools? I don't, I don't really know. Um, but I guess they're thinking about doing it for the competition and stuff. It's unclear to me. I feel like, I felt like I had missed a line here, but going back through it, I, I, I don't know. And he gives us one of the coolest, like, cut-in internal thought sequences. I really like the cutouts of Shadow being see-through, being transparent into his own mental state. It works really well. I'll bet that there was something like it going on in the manga for this sequence as he thinks to himself, but this is a really cool way to do it. And I've seen something a little bit like it in a couple of places, and it's always exciting when it happens. It, I don't know, it's just cool. It's just cool thinks it through, and comes to the conclusion that Sukuna thought he was more powerful than he currently is, and might even be able to beat special grades, and so he reaches out for more power? Oh, he's reaching into his shadow, isn't he? That's what he's doing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. His shadows go through reality. So maybe he'll be able to, like, hammer space things. That's the idea, is to carry cursed objects with him in his shadow and retrieve them. Ooh. Ooh. That could be very good. Tuna, tuna. All right. Uh, yeah, the movies. The goofies. And a setup for a battle. So we're going to be getting right into combat at the beginning of next episode while our characters all train on their own front. Gojo's going to be approached by a curse who wants him gone. And that might throw a wrinkle into our plans because he might be capable of doing it. I don't think he's going to be capable of doing it, but they are pretty... Well, they've planned well, at least. So maybe they have a chance. And if he brought all his friends, maybe they have more than a little bit of a chance. Spooky. Very cool. Lots of exposition over the course of the episode, but also some really pivotal character movement, um, especially for Yuji inside the mind and waking up and stuff, and Fushiguro moving towards something. I'm into it. I'm into it. Fun episode. Thanks for watching it with me. We will pick up next time to see what Volcano Head tries to do to Gojo and how Gojo beats the shit out of him. I hope. Fingers crossed. Much love. See you there. Early access on the Patreon. Peace.